Well, hello everybody. This is Linda from North Central Texas. And you know in the past we've made banana nut breads, uh, we've made muffins, we've made a lot of things, but today I'm going to actually make a banana nut applesauce cake. And I'm going to make it in my bunt pan. Uh, first of all, you need to, to oil your pan, and I put oil in there. I've sprayed it with what little bit of uh, cooking spray I had, which I ran out. The best thing to do is use Crisco in this, but I don't have any Crisco today, so, and I didn't want to run to the store just to pick up Crisco. So I'm going to just oil it down the best I can with what little bit of spray I had plus a little bit of oil, cooking oil, and we'll have to make that do. But really, first of all, you need to turn your oven on and preheat it. I think, what is it, to 350 degrees? So that'll be heating up. We're going to start out with... <coughs> <coughs> Let me get a cough drop in my mouth. So my allergies don't make me cough all through my video. We're going to put in, I think it's two, two and a quarter cups of flour, which I've already got it measured out. This is, uh, well, I've got too much in there. Two and a fourth cup would be down here. So... Hmm, I'm only going to put about half of that in there, because you need two and a quarter cups. I looked at my measuring thing wrong. Woo. Yeah, that's about two and a quarter cup right there, because this is a four cup. So that's one... Two, about two and a half. So that's it there. I don't need to put the rest of that in there. Two and a half cups, not four like I measured out. And then you're going to need um, one and two thirds cup of sugar. It's a lot of sugar, isn't it? You're going to need. Um, I'm using self-rising flour, so I don't need to put salt or baking powder. But if you're using cake flour or uh, plain flour, you need to add one teaspoon of salt and one and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. Like I said, I don't need to add that because I use self-rising. I'm going to put in two-thirds cup of shortening, which I've already got it measured out. And you can use buttermilk in this if you'd like. <clears throat> that is basically what the um, recipe calls for. But I don't have buttermilk. I don't usually buy buttermilk. And I'm going to use about... See where my measuring side is so I can see what I'm putting in there. I'm going to put about... Uh, two-thirds cup or about a half a cup of milk and mine is one percent you can use any kind you want
I'm going to put um, about a third of a cup or fourth of a cup of applesauce. I'm going to put a cup of bananas. Bananas? Uh -huh. Not bananas. And they've been already squished down in there, so it's a whole cup of bananas. Three eggs. I should have really got my big mixing bowl for this, but this will work. This big bowl will work. It's one that I'll usually mix a lot of stuff in. Now I'm going to add um, two-thirds cup finely chopped nuts. And I've just got the chopped walnuts that I buy in the bag. And that's about two-thirds of a cup that's in the bag, so I'm just going to dump those in. And they're not finely chopped, but you can have them coarsely chopped, or you can put them out in another container and finely chop them if you'd like. That's up to you. <clears throat> I'm going to add raisins to mine. Uh, you don't have to, but I like to add raisins. Oh, if I can get this bag open. <laughs> These packaging bags are kind of like the um, child-proof medicine bottles. The ones we can never, the adults can never get into. <laughs> I think the kids are more apt to get into them than we are. And I'm going to put about two-thirds cup or half a cup of raisins. Dump them right in there. Chop up a little bit of that banana that was not mashed. Now I'm going to bring this over here to my mixer. I've got a hand mixer. My cord won't reach all the way to the table. So I'm just going to do it right over here. You want to mix it to begin, be, can't talk, begin with on a low speed. You don't want all of that stuff to jump out of your bowl. <laughs> so just mix it on a low speed to begin with.
try to get all of that flour incorporated in the rest of the stuff and then the rest of the ingredients. And then you can increase the speed. And you'll want to mix it for about two or three minutes on a high speed. should be sufficient. Get these things out of here. And I did drop a little bit in the floor. And rather than step in it, I'm just going to take this paper towel and clean it up right now because I don't want to step in it and track it across the kitchen. <clears throat> now I'm simply going to come over here and pour it in my pan. always holding things wrong for the camera <laughs> so y'all have to bear with me I want to scrape all that goodness out of the bowl And I really should have my big spatula for this, but this one will work. This is just the one I grabbed, so. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other one. It might work a little bit better. Like I said, I always have the camera on the wrong side for me because I'm left-handed, basically. I am ambidextrous because I, I can use the other hand, but my preferred hand to use is my left hand for everything <laughs> or most things. And I don't really have to spread it out because it pours out on its own. I got it all over the outside of the pan somehow. 
go ahead and clean that off. And I'm going to clean the top, very top of it, because I got some of the batter up on the top. And I don't want that to burn. And now I'm just going to put my cake right in the oven. In my preheated oven at 350. And we're going to cook it for about uh, maybe 45 to 50 minutes. And see what happens with it. And we'll come back. Now I'm coming over here and I'm going to show you how to make our cream cheese uh, dress uh, frosting for our cake, which our cake is still cooking. So, but anyway, I've got my cream cheese out here in my bowl and it softened somewhat. Um, I can get it all off of here. I'm trying to get every bit of it in the content or the bowl that I need to work with. And this is just Walmart's regular inexpensive cream cheese, just one small box cream cheese, which is three out no eight ounces of it. You only need, let's see, three ounces of cream cheese. So I got a little bit more because about, you know, almost half of mine was gone, not quite half, so I just dumped it in there. Uh, you're going to need um, two and a half cups of confectionery sugar, just white confectionery sugar or powder sugar, as you call it. You're going to need um, one tablespoon of milk. Whoops. Measure out one tablespoon of milk. and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I love my little kitten. And there's one tablespoon. Now, as you start blending it with your blender, uh, I will also need a dash of salt, just a dash, not much. That's good right there. And it says once you start uh, blending it, if needed, add another tablespoon of milk. So we're going to see how this goes. <laughs> I'm going to start on really low. don't want it to throw that confectionery sugar all over the room. And I can already see I need to add just a little more milk. But you add more as you go, like one teaspoon at a time. Because if you've ever worked with powdered sugar, you know it doesn't take much to uh, melt it. And I'm going to try to get it off of my beaters as best I can. Because it's starting to cake up on my beater instead of down in the bowl. 
and it, you know it's not going to stir up mix up all the sugar in the bottom doing that so you just have to scrape it off down to the bottom and I usually mix up stuff like this by hand but I wanted to show you that you know for those of you that don't want to do it by hand you can definitely use your mixer I mean most recipes call for using the mixer anyway but we don't want to put more vanilla in it we want to put milk to loosen it up because we want it mix real well and we want it to uh, consistency that we can spread it on our cold cake because we'll have to let our, coop, our cake cool after it's cooked. Before we spread it on the cake. And I think I'm going to add another teaspoon of milk. <laughs> but you want to add one, one tablespoon, I meant tablespoon, not teaspoon. But you want to add one tablespoon at the time. Just until you, it reaches a consistency that's smooth enough that you can spread it on your cake. And I think that's it. It kind of drips off of the uh, beaters. That's kind of the consistency you want it. You don't want it too watery, but you want it so it will drip a little bit like that. If you can see that. i got to taste it. Mmm. That is good. I love cream cheese dressing. Especially if I make it myself, you know, I don't buy it from the store. I mean, that's what you get at the store is good, too. But, um, I like it when I make it homemade. And you see how easy it is. Just cream cheese, a dash of salt, powdered sugar, or confectionery sugar as they call it. And vanilla extract. That's all you need to make cream cheese dressing. I mean, cream cheese <laughs> icing. <laughs> oh my God, I'm still thinking about Thanksgiving. Talking about dressings. But yeah, it's real simple to make your cream cheese frosting for your uh, banana nut applesauce cake. It's going to be real good, and I will be taking this to my son's for uh, New Year's because it's, you know, it's helping to celebrate Christmas and New Year's together. So I'm going to be making a big pot of black eyed peas and I'm going to be taking my uh, banana nut raisin applesauce cake. Uh, and I will be taking some, you know, like I said, the black eyed peas. And I don't know, I might even fix Mexican cornbread muffins. I'm not sure yet, but I'll be back when my cake is done. Well, I'm back. My timer went off at 45 minutes. So, I'm going to take our cake out and check to see if it's done or not. I don't know if we'll have to put it back in for another, say, 10 minutes or not. Let me get a toothpick.
Yep, it's got to go back in. Because the toothpick came out with batter on it. So the top of my cake is not done yet. So I'm going to set the timer for another 10 minutes and then we'll check the cake. Well, it's been another 10 minutes, so we're going to check our cake again. Ooh, it's a heavy cake. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. Well, it's coming out clean, so it's been cooking enough. But we're going to have to let it cool a little bit before I take it out of this pan. I'm afraid if I try to take it out right now, it might break or stick. So I'm going to let it cool a little bit. And we've already got our frosting made. But I do have to let my cake cool before I can do anything with it. But I will bring you over here and let you see what it looks like close up. <laughs> if I can unplug this camera. Whoops, everything fell in the floor. Well, I can't win for losing, can I? Picked it up and it fell down there again. But anyway, let's come over here and see our cake. It looks good, but it's just too hot to work with. We're going to have to let it cool just a tiny bit. And then we can get it out of the pan. And here is our frosting. Like I said, it's uh, at a consistency where it drips a little. And that's the way you want it. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. But we can't put the icing on our cake with it hot because the icing will melt and it'll all end up run out in the uh, in the plate that I put it in. So we're going to give our cake time to cool. Well, my cake has been cooling for a little while. It's not completely cooled, but I'm going to try to see if I can invert it out to my plate. We will see. Ugh. It's kind of an awkward size, so... Ah! <laughs> don't want that to happen. And it's hard to hold on to this with mittens on. There. Because I felt like it would cool a little bit quicker if it was put out on a plate. I mean, it's not 100% cool. It's still warm. So it's still just a little bit too warm to put the icing on it. But it will cool a lot faster if you'll let it cool down almost. I mean, let it cool down to your pan is just barely warm. And then invert it on your dish. Or if you prefer, you can wait and let it cool completely and then flip it out. I like to do it this way. But... I've still got to let it cool before I put my icing on it. So I'm going to let that cool just a little bit more and then we're going to put our icing on it. Well, my cake is just about cool enough. It's still just a tiny bit warm, but I want it to be just a tiny bit warm. To put my icing on 
because I want it to kind of drip down the, the sides of it a little bit. So we're going to start just putting it around the top. And it'll drip down kind of in the center just a tiny bit. Put it on pretty thick at the top <clears throat> and give it a minute or two it will start to slide or drip down the edge i'll turn it around and show you what i'm talking about see it's starting to drip down the edge of the top because i don't think there's enough of the icing to completely cover the whole cake so you want it to kind of drip drip down the sides of it And since the cake is still just a tiny bit warm, it should should work out that way. I'm hoping anyway. See what it's doing. help some of it just a little bit And as it cools, it will harden just a tiny bit. The uh, moisture will kind of soak into the cake of the icing. see what it's doing right there. And you might have to help some of it along. <clears throat> Put a little bit right there, I think. If the cake is completely ice cold, then it may not drip as much because it'll get the icing too cold and it won't drip. So you want to leave your cake just slightly warm, not hot, but just slightly warm to do this. Woo! Got too much. <laughs> I got to taste a little bit. Because it was going off the side of the cake, or the plate.
My phone rings at the most inopportune times. Now, if you prefer to frost your whole cake solid and not have like drips going down the side, you can most certainly do that. Just spread it all out evenly on your cake. Because you'll definitely have enough icing to do it, I think. And if it doesn't look good, I may do that. <laughs> You know, if the drips don't look real good going down the side of the cake, I may just kind of do the whole thing. But so far, it's okay, I think. And I will keep this in the refrigerator until I go to my son's. But it'll be okay in the refrigerator for a couple of days until I go over there. You don't want your cake so hot that all the icing just completely drips off the top, though. And see, it will go down inside a little bit as well. A smaller spatula or a knife, either one, and kind of coat the icing around your hole in the center if you want to do that. Or like I said, you can let it drip. Either one you want to do. It'll be fine. And like I said, I may just go ahead and coat the whole thing. <laughs> but I'll show you two options. You can either drip it down the edge, or you can go ahead and actually ice in the whole outside of it smoothly. It's just whatever you want to do. I didn't really like the way it was looking, so I'm just going to... coat the whole outside. But you can try it either way. You know, you can drip it, see how you like the way it looks. If it doesn't look exactly the way you wanted it to, then go ahead and smooth your icing out on your cake. It's going to be good either way, I guarantee you.
Now I'm going to go ahead and scrape out all the rest of it that's in this bowl. And I'm just going to simply put it on top of the cake. And then the places that it needs it, on the sides, I will just bring it down from the top and go around the sides. Well, like I said, if yours looks good with the drip on it, you may want to leave it that way or smooth it out like I'm doing this one because I didn't I, I kind of, it wasn't dripping the way I wanted it to, <laughs> put it that way. And I like to, if I'm going to do the whole outside of the cake, I like to do it all the way down to the plate and not have any gaps in my cake all the way to the plate. To me, it looks better that way. I mean, just sm keep smoothing it out all the way around. Go real light with your spatula or your knife. Don't push real hard. Just go real light. Just enough to spread out that cream cheese dress. I mean, icing. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it dressing. I know it's not dressing. It's frosting. <laughs> And then you just kind of, kind of even it out across the top. And it's going to be so good, y'all. Now, I can't show you down in the hole, but <laughs> this little narrow spatula allows you to go down in that hole and kind of spread it out. And when I put it in the refrigerator and it gets really cold, that icing is going to set up. And it's not going to be runny. And like I said, a lot of the moisture will soak into the cake. And that helps set up the icing as well. So it doesn't run. I used to make jello cakes for my granddaughter every year. I called it her Christmas cake. But the last time I made my jello cake and tried to take it to my son's, it was a disaster. Because it's even further to his house now than it used to be. And I said, Well, I don't know if I want to do that with a jello cake anymore. So I started making other cakes to take over there, or muffins, you know, that type of thing. I'm just going to try to clean the edge of my plate off. So 
It's going to take a little bit of doing to get that in my refrigerator. Because my refrigerator is full right now. <laughs> And I would cut it, but I'm not going to because, like I said, I'm taking it to my my son's house because this will be the first Christmas I've spent with my granddaughter in a couple of years. So this is going to be the Christmas cake I'm baking for my granddaughter this year. Of course, everybody's going to share it, but I always say I bake the cake for her. But that's my Christmas cake this year. It's a... Uh, <coughs> Banana, nut, applesauce, raisin cake with cream cheese icing. And I think it's going to be so good. Y'all have to try making one. But isn't that pretty? I mean, that's a pretty cake right there. Yeah, that's a pretty cake. And it's still slightly warm, so i got to get that in the refrigerator. And let it uh, cool off. And that will stop the icing from running. It will set the icing up and make it a little bit more firm. But there you go. There's my uh, banana nut applesauce raisin cake with my cream cheese icing. Y'all have a blessed night or day or whenever you watch this. And I'll see y'all my next one. Bye.